Hello, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to just give a few minutes to let people filter in and then we'll get started. All right, I think I've uh, seen the number of people joining slowing down a little bit, so we'll go ahead and kick things off. Uh, well, thank you all for joining us today for Staffing Hub's 2022 State of Staffing Report. We've got a record number of web webinar re registrants today, and we're super excited to have all of you here. A couple of housekeeping items to get started. We will provide a recording of this as well as a link to the PDF and an email in the next few days. And also, we'd like to say thank you to our sponsors, Aviante, Bullhorn, Crelate, Staffing Referrals, and Tracker. We appreciate your continued support. Now let's get started. So I'm David Falwell, the president of Staffing Hub, and I'm joined today by Krista Garber, who is the managing editor of Staffing Hub. The agenda for today is first we're going to go through the Q2 Pulse survey. Uh, then we will be jumping into the talk about the great resignation followed by the state of the staffing industry. And then we will discuss some of the challenges and opportunities as well as the digital transformation. Uh, and then finally, we will review some tips on how your staffing needs to be more successful and then discuss some of the resources and advice provided from our survey respondents. So with that, I'm gonna go and pass it over to Krista Garber to kick things off with our poll survey. Hi everyone, thank you for being here. So this. The data for our state of staffing report was collected at the beginning of this year, and at that time, staffing leaders were predicting very significant growth for their agencies. But economic conditions have obviously changed since then, and there's a lot of uncertainty. So we wanted to find out if and how the new economic landscape will impact the staffing industry. We conducted a brief pulse survey of our audience just last week to see if their growth projections for this year have changed, and that's what you see on this slide. What we found is that 2022 growth projections remain extremely positive. Almost one third of our respondents said that they haven't changed their growth projections at all, Well, roughly 40% have actually revised them upward. Just under 30% have revised their growth projections downward for the year, but most of these were small revisions. And here are just a few quotes from the responses to our poll survey that represent the comments as a whole. You guys can check this out in the recording afterwards, so I won't read them all. But overall, there were a few respondents who said there would be a negative impact, and that could reflect the industry sector that they serve. But on the whole, the sentiment seems to be that the economic downturn will likely help balance, and su balance the supply and demand for the industry. Several respondents said that more candidates will likely come back into the workforce, while others highlighted that the market will continue to grow, but just at a slower pace. So also this year, for the first time, we included a brief workforce survey as part of the state of staffing report so we could explore the great resignation. But again, since economic conditions have changed since we collected the original data, we conducted a short poll survey of more than 300 members of the workforce to see if anything has also changed on the job seeking front. So the charts on the next few slides are brand new. In our original survey, 46% of people said that they would look for a new job this year. In the recent Pulse survey, that number was 42%, so a slight decrease. But in line with our original results, men, younger respondents, and part-time, temporary, and freelance workers are the groups most likely to look for a new job. Higher pay remains the top reason people will change jobs. The percentage of people who cited this reason is actually up a little, three percentage points from the first survey, but otherwise nothing has changed here. Now we'll jump into where people find jobs. These data are from the original report. Referrals made up the largest single source where respondents found their current jobs. Almost one quarter got their job through a referral, with online job boards following at 16%. As you can see, one quarter of respondents also said that they found their job through a source that isn't listed here. So in future, we plan to dig into these alternative sources. As you're looking at this data, you might notice that only 4% of people found their job through a recruiter. And that might seem a little bit disheartening, but I think it provides an opportunity for staffing agencies to improve by leveraging some of these other sources more effectively. 
For example, how can recruiters tap into some of those referral or social media networks to reach candidates where they're already looking? And this slide shows where people plan to look for their next job. Not surprisingly, nearly half of respondents will look on an online job board, and referrals are second to 23%, which suggests that people plan to ask friends or colleagues to help them. Again, we have a large percentage in the other categories, so hopefully we'll be able to parse that out next time. Okay, now we're going to jump into the industry data we collected earlier this year and that we presented in the state staffing report. We'll take a look at actual growth rates from 2021, as well as the growth projections for 2022. To start off, who took the survey? We had almost 300 staffing professionals participate. And as you can see, more than half were owners, managers, or C-level. And the respondents came from all industry verticals, but the IT, industrial, and healthcare verticals were the largest. Actually, if you add up the various healthcare sectors on this graph, travel nursing, allied healthcare, et cetera, it comes to more than 40%. So that was actually the biggest group as a whole. And staffing firms of all sizes were represented. So the largest group was agencies with annual revenue of less than 25 million. So every year for this report, we've categorized agencies as either fast growth or slow growth. And the goal of segmenting the groups this way is to help you identify what strategies and tactics are most effective at driving agency growth. In the past, we've defined an agency as fast growth if it grew more than 21% year over year. However, this year, agencies reported such high growth rates that we changed the cutoff to 51% or more. So these are the two groups we'll be comparing in the rest of this report. Okay, this slide shows the actual growth for 2021 and projected growth for 2022 across the entire industry. Overall, and not surprisingly, 2021 was much better than 2020 for the staffing industry, and a positive trajectory is expected to continue this year. Uh, 2020 isn't shown here, but in that year, 37% of our survey respondents reported no growth. As you can see, that number declined to 11% in 2021, and this year, only 1.5% don't expect to grow at all. On the other end of the spectrum, about 80% of respondents expect their agencies to grow by 11% or more in 2022, and that's up about 10 percentage points from last year. This slide shows 2021 actual growth by vertical. Uh, many agencies grew by 51% or more last year. More than half of the respondents in the healthcare, per diem, IT, and legal, indus legal industries reported greater than 51% growth. This quote here is representative of the IT market in particular. Here's what the respondent said. The IT market is crazy. Capitalize on the opportunities. Especially with remote work being acceptable, it opens up borders and widens the candidate pool to select qualified candidates to meet the client's expectations. And here you can see the projected growth rate by vertical for this year. Overall, agencies in IT, professional, and industrial staffing expect to see the largest growth. Across verticals, industrial is the most positive, with 93% of respondents predicting growth of 51% or more. It will be interesting to see how this plays out with the current economic uncertainty. Okay, now I'll pass it over to David to talk about opportunities and challenges, as well as what fast growth firms do differently from slow growth ones. Thank you so much, Krista. Now let's jump into some of the challenges and opportunities for staffing agencies. Consistent with previous years, getting candidates to respond and finding qualified candidates remain the top two challenges. And consistent with previous years, these challenges are more difficult for the slower growth agencies. One interesting thing to note is that the fastest growing agencies rated onboarding, credentialing, and redeployment as more challenging than their slow growth counterparts. We believe this is likely due to the fact that fast growth staffing agencies are more focused on the entire candidate experience, while slow growth agencies are still trying to solve some of the fundamental sourcing challenges. When it comes to finding new candidates, direct sourcing and referrals continue to be the most effective lead source for finding new talent across all agencies. Compared to previous years where Indeed was the top source for talent, agencies are starting to look at alternative sourcing strategies to ensure they can find the talent their clients need. With ongoing war for talent, our data suggests that agencies are implementing new tactics to leverage their existing database for redeployment and referrals. We've heard from many agencies that they, the use of their existing talent network helps them create a sustainable competitive advantage by finding candidates that their competitors can't find on job boards. 
Looking at how agencies are finding new clients, referrals, cold outreach, and LinkedIn were rated as the top three sources. Not surprisingly, fast growth firms rate almost all sources as more effective than slow growth firms, except paid advertising, which both groups view as the least effective method of finding new business. The big di biggest difference here is in cold calling, which fast growth firms rated second highest and slow growth firms rated near the bottom. This suggests fast growth firms have developed more effective cold outreach strategies. One takeaway here is that if you're not getting the job orders you need, you might wanna consider looking at ramping up your cold outreach efforts. When we asked what, what are the biggest opportunities for staffing agencies in 2022, we received a lot of great insights. Here are just a few of the key takeaways. One, focusing on your niche and quality over quantity when it comes to job orders. Additionally, a new trend this year, there are a lot of recommendations talking about focusing on retaining top talent by improving your company culture. And in line with this, more agencies suggested focusing on finding quality recruiters. Looking now at the MPS scores, the average net promoter score for agencies shot up since our last report when agencies reported an industry average of 56. Today, a high MPS is table stakes, though slow growth agencies continue to lag behind the industry average. Once again, the net promoter score was highly correlated with agency growth rates. Now jumping into the digital transformation, we're going to share some insights on key trends related to your tech stack. First, looking at attitudes towards technology, both, both fast growth and slow growth agencies believe more than ever that technology will create a competitive advantage and that recruiting automation will transform the industry. Fast growth agencies are 50% more likely to identify as an early adopter and twice as likely to say their business is leading the digital transformation. This suggests companies are taking the lead that companies that are taking the lead on digital initiatives have a true competitive advantage and are in fact growing faster. When it comes to what's next for your tech stack, we identified five key software categories and compared the adoption of these technologies between slow growth and fast growth agencies. What we found is that texting has become the norm for the majority of agencies, but there were few key differences in some of these categories. Fast growth agencies are much more likely to have implemented mobile apps, chatbots, and automated referral management software, which does make sense based on their early adopter mindset seen from the fast growth segment. Looking now at what software was rated as the most valuable for staffing agencies, uh, Bullhorn was rated as the most valuable tech overall, uh, LinkedIn was rated as the most valuable sourcing tool, and Sense received top honors as the most valuable automation platform. Jumping into the ratings for the most valuable technology based on the categories, our survey respondents listed their ATS as the clear winner for the most valuable so software. It was followed by timesheet automation, resume parsing, business texting and recruiting automation. Looking at market share data, Bullhorn, Aviante and Tracker held the top three positions in the market for ATSs with Bullhorn at 24% followed by Aviante at almost 13% market share. One thing to note this year is that almost 18% of respondents selected other as their ATS. We believe this is due to the rapid increase of new software platforms to select from. Additionally, only 3.8% of respondents are currently using a proprietary ATS. When it comes to recruiting automation, roughly one quarter or about 22.9% of respondents said their agency doesn't use any marketing or recruiting automation at all, which we believe will change over the course of the next few years as automation becomes the industry standard for keeping up with the competition. Among agencies that do use automation, HubSpot is the most common followed by Sense and then staffing referrals. For reference, in 2021, 69% of staffing agencies were using some form of recruiting automation compared to this year, where 77% of agencies have implemented recruiting automation software. Looking now at text messaging software, the majority of staffing agencies use text texting software today, but for the first time this year, Sense was rated as the market leader followed closely by TextUs. With text, message, text messages beating email response rates by as much as 8x, we expect agencies to continue to shift more of their communication through over to SMS. A rapidly emerging category for staffing agencies is mobile apps, with one third of agencies currently providing a mobile app for candidates. When it comes to market share, almost three in 10 firms use a custom built mobile app. Otherwise, the clear market leader is Workin with 25.9% market share. From a strategic standpoint, having a mobile app allows you to build and maintain a direct relationship with your talent. We expect to see a rapid increase in adoption of mobile apps in the coming years, 
And if this category follows the same trend as applicant tracking systems, we'd guess that custom built apps will lose traction as software suppliers like Workin and Tempworks continue to build out their product offerings. Next, approximately 18% of respondents in our survey indicated that their agencies currently use chatbots. For the small number of agencies, there was a wide variety of chatbots being used. HubSpot is the most common with 13% market share, but no other technology reached more than a few percentage points. So here we provide the full list of chatbots mentioned by the respondents in our sample. When it comes to referral management software, we saw more tech adoption over the last year with 11% of agencies currently using automated referral management software. For market share, staffing referrals is the most widely used with 62% of the market, followed by Sense with 10% market share. As agencies continue to look at alternative sourcing strategies for finding candidates that aren't frequenting job boards, we expect to see growth in the use of referral software as we do with all of the technologies we've discussed. For these charts, we asked survey respondents to share their allocated budget for new technology and ask where they plan to spend money this year. Staffing firms under 25 million in revenue continue to allocate the largest portion of their budget to technology or software spend annually. Firms of all sizes expect to spend more in 2022 than they did in 2021. When asked where they plan to spend their budget, agencies listed other bullhorn sense, work in, and referral software as their top five priorities for the year. When it comes to job board spend, there was a clear difference in who spends the most. Fast growth companies spend 62% more on job boards per month than slow growth companies. Additionally, on the bottom of the chart, we have broken down average monthly job board spend by industry vertical so that you can see how you compare to your peers. As you might expect, job board spend varies widely based off the size of your organization and the difficulty of finding talent for the respective vertical. Based on our data, engineering, industrial, and IT spent the most on job boards compared to life science, marketing, and creative, and education, which spent significantly less on job boards. Now I'm going to pass it off to Krista to talk about staffing agency success factors. Thanks, David. Uh, briefly, before I get into this, we had a question coming in asking uh, to restate the survey sample. The main portion of the data or what we're presenting here from the state of staffing report came from almost 300 staffing professionals. And most of those were in the C-level management or owner category. So thanks for the question. Okay, so this year for the first time, we asked about some key performance metrics and elements of the recruiter and candidate experience. This is so we could identify some success factors and provide some benchmarks by, vertic by vertical to help you see how your agency stacks up. I'm not gonna go through all these results in great detail because there's a lot, but we will make this presentation available after the webinar, or you can also download the state of staffing report and find all of this information. Okay, so here you can see that the average fill rates range from a high of 67% for marketing and creative positions to a low of 39% for allied healthcare. And for how long it takes to fill jobs, travel nursing positions are filled in about eight days well, it can take more than a month to fill the positions in legal, life sciences, professional, engineering, financial accounting, and IT. The redeployment rate, or the percentage of employees who renew their contract, is highest in the marketing, creative, and travel nursing fields, and lowest in finance, accounting, and engineering. And meanwhile, the cost per hire is highest for legal, IT, and engineering, and lowest for travel nursing. We also looked at some per recruiter metrics. Here you can see that the average number of active contracts ranges from about 20 in IT to 45 in the more high volume sectors of office, clerical, and industrial. And growth margin per recruiter is highest for healthcare per diem and lowest for legal. We also asked for the first time about on target earnings for recruiters and salespeople. As you might expect, the pay is highest in the engineering, finance, accounting, and IT verticals, and lowest in industrial. So this year, we wanted to take a bit of a different tack and look at what staffing professionals consider the most important attribute of recruiters. And as you can see here, being relationship-oriented was ranked as the most important attribute by far. Um, what I think is really interesting here is that tech savvy was ranked last, even though from the present presentation that David just gave, you can see technology is clearly a factor, a key driver of success. 
What I think this emphasizes is that technologies need to be easy and intuitive for recruiters to use so that they can focus on the much more important tasks of building relationships with their talent. And finally, we asked about certain aspects of the recruiter experience and what benefits firms offer to candidates. Overall, agencies use a variety of initiatives to create a positive recruiter experience, including providing flexible time off, focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion. However, there is also a lot of room for agencies to do more. The aggregate answers here suggest that respondents only slightly agreed with all of the statements that we assessed. For candidate benefits, health benefits are the most common, uh, but in open-ended responses, many agencies also said that they offer a 401k. Okay, and at the, finally here, we'll take a look at where you can find some industry resources as well as advice for agencies that are just starting out or looking to grow. So there are many staffing events held throughout the year. Uh, the American Staffing Association's Staffing World is one of the one most respondents plan to go to, followed by Staffing Industry Analyst Executive Forum. ASA and SIA are also the top two providers of industry information and content. So. If you haven't checked them out, you definitely should. And if you're new to the industry, here are a few top recommendations from your peers. As you can see, especially with housing booming going the past couple of years, uh, being resilient has uh, a really important one, as well as learning as much as you can about the industry and making smart tech choices. Okay, that is the end of our presentation. Uh, we want to thank you all for being here. Uh, we will be sending out the recording and copy of the slide deck to everyone who registered. So have a great rest of your day. Thank you all for joining. Get some time back.